2.5% is a correct answer. All right, and what about number three? 125% is correct. How do you get to 125%? You owe more than it's worth. You owe more than it's worth. How does that happen? You're upside down. How did you get upside down? 203K, there's a lot of things. First of all, way back in the day, we used to lend 125% right off the bat. We don't do that anymore. But you could have things that are called negatively amortized loans where the principal is going up over time, right? Or do property values sometimes go down? So we might have bought this house for 150,000 two years ago. Now it's only worth 100. And we had borrowed 125,000 dollars on it, and that didn't go down very much, right? So, so here's why it relates to risk. All right, I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Then I'm going to write something on the board, and then we're going to dive into those appraisal reports. What time are we at right now? We're doing good, I think. Oh, this is beautiful. We're perfect. All right. So here's what happens. Let's say that uh, I, I have my house, it's worth $100,000. You're living next door, your house is worth $100,000. If everything's identical with us and we go to the bank and you borrow $80,000 on your house and get a 5% interest rate, I go in later in the day and I borrow $90,000 on my $100,000 house, am I getting the same 5% interest rate? Everything else is identical, credit score, income. No. No. What's my interest rate going to be, lower? Higher. Why is it going to be higher? Why am I more risky? All right, so I want to say more money. I want to put that in quotes because I'm going to show you why the answer is not specifically more money. It is in this case, but more money is not the answer that you want to be thinking. All right, you with me? What's your first name? Higher LTV. Higher LTV. John, you're the one who said more money, right? So, oh, right. So it's a higher LTV. That's the correct answer. You borrowed 80% of the value of your house. I borrowed 90%. Are you with me? Now, why is that important that I would pay a higher rate? Because I'm more risky. Why? Well, here's why. I don't have as much skin, but here's in reality why. Tomorrow, by the way, in parts of the country, do property values sometimes go down drastically? Yes. Love Canal, it happened here. What about in Detroit, Michigan? Didn't uh, the water get, right? Uh, Atlantic City, how much did property values go down? Let's just do an example. Let's say 15% overnight. Are you with me? I borrowed $90,000 on my $100,000 home. You borrowed $80,000 on your $100,000 home. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow, the homes are worth $85,000. Which one of us is more inclined to make our payments? She still has $5,000 equity in her house. She's more inclined to make the payments on her house. Me, I'm, I'm already upside down. I'm more likely to skip out if I need to because I'm not losing anything, right? So that's part of the reason why it's more risky. If you sold your house tomorrow for $85,000, how much does a bank get? $80,000 because that's what you borrowed. What do you get? $5,000 Five. Five in equity. Everybody's happy, right? You're a little less happy than you were when you had $20,000 equity. But if I sell my house now for $80,000, $85,000, how much does a bank get? $85,000. Why? Because I owed them how much? Ninety. 90. So in the old days, they used to get deficiency judgments against us. Now, they do short sales and everything like that, right? But do you see why? Is that risky? The bank lost 5000 on me? So I was more risky, so they make that up by charging a higher interest rate. But here's why it's not that I borrowed more money. I'm going to do another example. We live next door to each other again, right? $100,000 house, I'm in a $200,000 house. Everything else is identical. Income, all that stuff, we qualify. You borrow $80,000 in the morning. You get a 5% interest rate. I come in in the afternoon and I borrow $160,000. What's my interest rate? Higher? Did you say, all right, what's your name? Terry. I'm sorry? Terry. Terry. Terry, would you like to put a dollar on your answer? Sure. Okay, let's see that dollar. No doubling down. No split nations. Would you hand that dollar over to me, please? Because I apologize, but that's an incorrect answer. I see you got your, your $2 out because you want to go the opposite side. Would you tell us why? My LTV is lower. It's a, the same. I borrowed how much money on my house? Oh, right, 160, which would be what? 80%, right? 80% of 200,000 is 160. So my loan to value is 80%. 
her loan to value is 80%. Just because my house is worth 200,000 doesn't make a difference. We're not talking about $10 million properties. We're talking about homes that are 100,000 to a million dollars. You with me? So we borrowed the same level of exposure, loan to value, same risk level. So that's why it's not because I borrowed more money that my interest rate would be higher. It's the same because I have the same level of exposure with the bank. Fair enough? All right, cool. All right, let's go on to the appraisal reports. Let's start actually reading some of this stuff. Anybody not have a copy? Because the loan to value was identical. 80% of 200,000 is 160,000. 80% of 100,000 is 80,000. You borrowed 80, I borrowed 160. Yes? Okay, so let me just show, all right. So we'll, we're not gonna go too heavily into credit because that's another class, but I'll, I'll touch on it. If somebody has a lower credit score, are they a higher risk? Yes. yes, they are. I'll get into that in another class, but the bottom line is, if you have a lower credit score, you're gonna pay a higher rate. Why with loan to value does it matter? Well, I just showed you that if you borrow, what if I borrowed 100% of the value of my house? But here's the way it works behind the scenes in the mortgage company, and we're, we have everything on computers these days, right? But basically it works like this. So <clears throat> let's say that uh, we have loan to value, 95%, they put down 5%, 90%, and 85% LTV. So that means they put down 5% over here, they put down 10%, over here they put down 15%. Fair enough? This person might pay, uh, let's call it 5.5%, they would pay 5% rate, and they would pay 4.75. I'm just making it up, it's not true, true numbers. But why are they paying a higher rate? No, not because they're borrowing more, because their loan to value is higher. Lenders in conforming loans or conventional loans like to be at 80% loan to value or less. Hey, I'll show you something. Let's say we did this, loan to value. So we have 75.01 to 80% LTV. 80.01 to 85% LTV. 85.01 to 90% LTV. There's levels, ranges. That's why at 82.5%, it was good. I didn't care. Eight, she could have told me 82, 83. Let's say the interest rate here is going to be 5, 5.5, five and, and 6. What does a higher interest rate mean? You're gonna pay more money in? Interest. Interest, right? Now, it makes your payment higher. Does that affect the borrowers? Yes. What could it do? It could, it could cut them out of the deal because if they don't have the debt to income ratio in line with the loan, because they're paying $300 a month more here than they would over here, that might kill the deal. So one way they might be able to do that is put down less money. Now, let's say for argument's sake, that, oh, I wonder where she went. Did she go to get more dollars? <laughs> <clears throat> All right. That was wrong, right? It was just wrong. <laughs> Did the ATM give out dollars or just 20s? I got you. You ready? All right. So watch this. Pay attention here. Let's say that we had, who would, yeah, I said, where'd you go? To get more money? <laughs> who would like to answer this question for me? Who's brave enough? You don't know what the question is. All right, first name again was? John. All right, John. You ready, John? All right, John and John only. I like your... By the way, when you learn more things, you become more confident or more competent. And with more competence, become more confident. I want you guys to go from being real estate agents to being trusted advisors. What's important in our business? Your business and my business? Referrals, right? You get referrals because you do the right thing. Trust, you gotta gain trust. So become a trusted advisor. Are you ready? Let's say that we just did a, we're doing a deal 
We haven't closed it yet. And the person has 80.01% loan to value on their property. What interest rate will you give them? Yes, they have 80.01% loan to value. Which interest rate would you give them? How many people here would give them 5.5%? Show of hands, how many people? The credit, I'm oh, sorry, the credit is separate. There's many, anybody cook here? Anybody make soup? You're gonna make some Italian wedding soup. Are there a lot of ingredients that go into make that soup? There's a lot of ingredients that go into qualifying a buyer for a loan, not one thing. I'm just teaching you a very narrow portion of that. Fair enough? Okay, so how many people say 5.5%? How many people have a different answer? What do you have? So they have 80.01% loan to value, and you're going to drop them down here. Hmm, interesting. I want the deal. You, you, yeah, but... So, so you're going to, you know, they don't sell white out anymore, right? So what do you do? You go on to uh, the computer and you change it? No. Mm. So the answer is, I would bring you into my course and re-educate you. You are technically correct here. However, at 80.01, are they very close to 80%? That could be the difference of $85 a month in payment. It may not seem like a lot, but, you know, that adds up to what, $1,000 a year? Right? And at 80%, what's important? If it's a, conform a conforming or conventional type loan, not FHA, what wouldn't they have here that they would have here? Private mortgage insurance. They might have $250 a month in private mortgage insurance here. At 80% LTV, they wouldn't have it. So how do I get them to go from 80.01% to 80%? I'll tell you what we do as mortgage loan officers. The first thing that we look to do is we look to make sure that they have enough money to put down, right? So the first thing that we do is we usually look to cut the real estate agent's fee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you're paying attention over there. Huh? You woke up over there. All right, no, that's the second thing we do. We look to cut the attorney's fee. All right, look, we have lender's credits. We got all kinds of things that we could do. We could see, hey, could, could somebody in the family give you a gift letter for $10,000? You could borrow that $10,000, get into the 80%. We do these things all the time. I know you guys think that we uh, sit around the office and play darts and watch TV, but we actually work on these files constantly. And we're putting on our thinking caps to see what we can get, how we can help them. Does that make sense? Creative finance. I'm sorry? Creative finance. Well, I don't want to say creative because that has, it has a connotation that we're doing something, but can we bend rules? We can bend rules, we just don't break them. But what we do is we look to see, especially debt to income ratio, credit reports, what can we do to help this borrower? Now, by the way, we only do this extra work when? When we have to. I don't know, whatever he's smoking, I want some of that. <laughs> Um, by the way, we don't know each other. <laughs> awesome. We did go to school together, right? I graduated yeah. about 40 years earlier than him. All right, let's go through the appraisal now. Let's take a look at this. This is a sample appraisal report. It doesn't have every single thing in there, but as we go through this, you'll learn a few things, all right? <clears throat> and right now we are at uh, 1040, and we get out of here at uh, 12, right? Negotiating, always happening, always negotiating. All right, anybody not have an appraisal report in front of them? All right, let's read this. All right, so <clears throat> first thing, and by the way, you know, from area to area might be a little bit different, but they all use the same form because it's uniform across the United States. So <clears throat> this is an appraisal of this property. They take a picture of the subject property. It tells you where it's located at, who it's for. In this case, if it was for my bank, it would say Intercontinental Capital Group. The borrower's name, the date that it was done, and who it's by. Now, take a look at this. This guy now named Barry Cleveden, IFA. I think that's the International Federation of Appraisers or something like that. All right? Now, 
certified residential appraiser. And there's his appraisal number on the bottom of that. By the way, do you guys have real estate license numbers? You do. Loan officers about 12 years ago, we now are part of what's called NMLS, National Mortgage Licensing System. We have to be licensed. By the way, if you think it's a joke, here's the way it goes. Real estate agent's license here. Mortgage loan officer license here. I just, I'm 18 years in the business. I got to go. I just had to have my fingerprints done again. They do credit check on us. They, well, I got to do 11 hours just for New York State every year. I'm fortunate. <laughs> she likes that. How many hours do you guys got to do as appraisers? 28 every two years. Woo-woo! But it's 14 hours every year, right? But do you see the level? So here, real estate license, loan officer license, right? You ready? Appraisal license on the moon. No kidding. I, I, I'm not joking. By the way, when we go through this, I told you you're going to find a newfound respect for what the appraisers do. And instead of just thinking they don't know what they're doing or whatever, the education, the hours that they go through, the things, 